Uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes, Parvis, we can hear you now. Uh, can, can you try to speak again? Okay, sorry for any inconveniences. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can't we can hear you, but you are, you know, uh, quiet. You, can you speak louder? Uh, uh, can you hear me now? Yes, it's good now. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Well, uh, today, uh, well, let's start with some background information. Okay, uh, in the early months of 2020, uh, coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, surged in China and surrounding countries, uh, leading to large-scale school closings. Uh, the virus has since spread and uh, spread and around the world, and has arrived in Uzbekistan as well. So, on March 11, the World Health Organization declared the outbreak a pandemic. Uh, no one knows how far white and long coronavirus will spread while young people especially children uh, tend to handle the virus far more effective than older patients closing public institutions like schools where many people mingle on a daily basis has been seen by some as an effective way to combat the spread of the pandemic uh, almost all universities and schools across the country canceled in-person classes. Well, the decision to close schools is controversial for some and must be weighed against the impact that it will entail. But just because school is closed, that doesn't mean that learning needs to stop. Uh, using technology like learning management systems, instructors and teachers can uh, continue to teach lessons from their homes. Many universities and schools use learning management systems as part of their as part of their teaching process. This technology can allow a good deal of remote communication between teachers, students and parents. But will it be enough? And uh, I want to introduce myself. My name is Parviz and I'm going to give you a presentation on topic efficiency of LMS during pandemic in Central Asia and Europe. And I will include some suggestions on how to improve the systems. Let's start. Okay. Uh, today's points for my presentation is I will outline what is an LMS, what does it mean, then give some facts and figures about uh, what organizations are using and what kinds of LMSs are there. Then uh, I will tell briefly about our study that we conducted with two universities using two different learning management systems. Then um, I will tell about my conclusion and related suggestions. So what is an LMS? Uh, LMS stands for learning management system. Learning management systems are software programs for instructors to manage and organize educational courses online and provide students a single location for all course material. LMSs are used to help streamline information between educational institutions and students over the internet, allowing for increased learning capabilities that are more accessible to the general public. And looking back, uh, the first appearance of LMS dates back to 1924 when Sydney Pressey invented the first teaching machine. It closely resembled a typewriter with a window that could administer questions. Uh, it contained two windows. Uh, with one of them would use it to show the question and the other one to fill in the answer. And currently, uh, there has been so many uh, LMS softwares impl implemented by so many universities all around the globe uh, over the last century. So, and currently, it's mainly being used by almost all corporate and organizations, all educational institutions, uh, including schools and universities, and many government companies. And also private tuition and institutions 
uh, employed the L certain kinds of LMS to improve their uh, productivity. A wide range of different organizations from high schools to large corporations can benefit from using LMS by re reducing expenses for certain things like classroom rental because they now don't have to use classroom to teach their students because uh, now they can uh, teach or learn uh, remotely from their home. And secondly, transport and accommodation. It also saves some money for organizations because uh, students, don't, students are not required to use any transportation because they are studying at home. And also, uh, these expenses that can be reduced include instructor's salary and learning material printout because all uh, books will be in e-format, which can be uh, shared uh, throughout the internet. So currently, uh, the top, uh, top learning management systems all around the globe are Paradiso Solutions, iSpring Learn, Easy LMS, Talent LMS, Google Classroom, Litmos LMS, Moodle and Canvas LMS. And the last two of them are included in, in the study we, that we conducted with two universities in our country. And let's talk about our research. Um, our research were, uh, our research aim was to uh, assess the efficiency of LMSs that are that has been that are being used by two universities in our country, and these two universities use two different learning management system softwares like Moodle and Canvas. So, uh, our research design and methodology uh, we use a quantitative method. And this means collecting numerical data, which can be counted. And we use this method uh, because there has been so many research that uh, use it and implemented this method and it proved successful. So then we use e-survey, which helped us to reach out more respondents in a short time without need to travel because uh, during the pandemic, we are not allowed to uh, travel and meet person uh, in person. Then, our first question uh, was to determine whether students have a stable internet connection that they can uh, access whenever the organization or university wants. So, and the figures show that 84% of respondents can actually have a stable internet connection and the remaining percentage uh, were, were for students uh, who said either no or I don't know. Uh, then our second e-survey was about students' comfort level using technology and technological devices in general. Uh, as we can see from the uh, graph provided there, uh, more than 90% of students, respondents, uh, said that they are comfortable with using technological devices and uh, more than 70% of them were very comfortable using technological devices. And as we can see, a tiny proportion of um, respondents said that they are very uncomfortable using technological devices and we uh, and as we can see uh, different kind of LMS softwares can provide different services so we um, carried out a survey in order to assess the services which can be uh, and prioritize them so we asked students which services they need the most and which services they use most of the time. So the, um, the close analysis showed that uh, three of the most, uh, three of the 
services with the highest average scores were assignments, announcements, and resources. As you can see, uh, students um, said that they are required to use these services and also they needed to use them. And because of that, their average scores are the highest. On the other hand, three services with the lowest average scores were blogs, polls, podcasts. And this can be due to the fact that these services can be accessed by other platforms. And also, they don't need to use blogs and podcasts uh, during the lesson. And uh, after careful analysis, we came to conclusion and conclusion that implementing LMS could be the most optimal way to keep students studying during the pandemic. Uh, because now they cannot leave home and also uh, most of the universities have implemented LMS and op almost all of them has proved uh, successful. So then uh, after, after some analysis, we came to conclusion that Moodle uh, implemented by universi first university is seen as complex compared to Canvas implemented by university number two. It's maybe more, uh, it's because Moodle has used so many services that students actually did not need and also they did not require to use them. And also can on the other hand, Canvas is the platform used by so many universities and universities and they provide the most essential services to students which uh, improves the uh, learning process and we uh, are going to suggest give some suggestions in order to improve the LMS uh, used it in these two universities and all around the globe so some services offered offered by these two LMS should be eliminated while others should be given a priority. So, uh, as, we as we said earlier, there were blogs, polls, and these kind of services were not required uh, to use at all. And on the other hand, uh, we also carried out uh, one survey which asked students to give suggestions how to improve the LMS. And they gave us some um, services which should be included in these LMS softwares. These services uh, included assignments, announcements, resources, course outlines, and chat rooms. So uh, chat rooms um, were required to put into use mostly because students want to collaborate with their uh, friends, with their teachers. So chat rooms will be a uh, great thing to include in LMSs. And these uh, services uh, should be given a priority uh, before uh, LMSs are implemented uh, in schools. So thank you for your attention. That was the end of my presentation. And if you have any questions, um, you can uh, feel free to ask. So if you have any questions, please go ahead and ask. Or if you have any suggestions which you can give, uh, we are welcome. You are welcome. Yeah, I, I would like to add something. Uh, since my research is also uh, related to the re topic research of yours, yeah. so I can also add something, I, I guess. 
Uh, yeah, I agree with you. Moodle is seen as very complex application compared to other applications. And recently, uh, we have uh, there has been a launch of uh, a new software. Uh, uh, it is called Intuto in Innovative Center, yeah, which we have been using in our classrooms. And yeah, the simplicity, yeah, the best part of that application is its simplicity. The fact that it's so much simple to use that application and it's also so in intuitive to use it. Even new users who have never used the LMSs, they can just go there and browse things and just easily understand it. Yeah, and it was uh, wonderful research and you have wonderful findings. Uh, thank you for that Parvis. Yeah. I hope uh, th this information will help uh, other teachers in the future to integrate LMSs into their classrooms. Okay, thank you, Jeff, for your suggestions and for your feedback. And is there anyone who wants to add something?